Every year, an average of 50,000 Singaporeans turn 65. Today, one in 10 Singaporeans are above the age of 65. Who is taking care of our elderly? Social workers are seeing a rise in the number of old people having to take care of the even older. Today, two in five caregivers are above 50. It's a statistic set to increase. And in Singapore's race against a rapidly aging population, it's a worrying trend. In this edition of Get Real, we meet these aging caregivers to find out if they're getting the support they need. It's midnight. 93-year-old Chui Cheng is still awake. She asks her daughter to bring her a comb. Twice. As Chui Cheng sleeps less than four hours a night, so too does 63-year-old Chu Ha, who is a full-time caregiver to her mother. It isn't long before her mother wakes up again. This time she needs to use the toilet. This happens about five times a night. In the day, Chu Ha needs to help her mother to the toilet almost every half an hour. It all started four years ago, when Chui Cheng was diagnosed with cancer. To make matters worse, she also broke her leg during a fall. Since then, she is no longer mobile and needs full-time care. Today, one in ten Singaporeans are above 65. By 2030, it will become one in four. With an aging society comes the urgent need for caregivers. Chuhar is not alone. According to surveys today, Already two in five caregivers are above 50 years old. There will definitely be a trend of uh, caregivers being older in future. For example, if we see a trend of uh, singlehood among those who are in their 30s and 40s, they are likely to be the ones caring for their parents. And uh, if the parents are living to a ripe age of 100, the son or daughter is likely to be 65 or 70 years old. Being the only single in the family, Chu Ha became the default caregiver. But caregiving became more difficult when her mother started showing signs of dementia last year. <laughs>
These uh, aging caregivers are likely to suffer from exhaustion. They complain about uh, not being able to get good sleep at night and therefore it affects their emotional state the next day of not having enough social support both from family as well as from community. While Chu Ha is helped by a maid, caregiving has left her physically and emotionally drained. Respite care, however, is not an option for her. Respite care is offered by about 28 nursing homes and other service providers for stays lasting anything between a few days to a few months. Money is also an issue. No subsidies are given for respite care and Medisave cannot be used, only cash. Cash, which Chu Ha does not have. I 要给那些住院的费,我就用我的CPA扣了 In Singapore, respite care is underdeveloped. Perhaps uh, allowing use of Medisafe for respite care, allowing use of credit cards and other forms of payment, even online payment, for example, would increase the options and the flexibility for family members to use the respite care. That is the same reason why respite care is not an option for Lim Yu Ping. This 62-year-old has not gone to work for two weeks, but the rest doesn't seem to be doing him any good. Six years ago, Yu Ping was diagnosed with liver cancer. He had his liver removed and was on the mend. But lately he has had an odd pain in his back. <coughs> but Lim Yu Ping is not the person who needs care in this household. He is the caregiver. He has to take care of his wife, 57-year-old Susan Muck, who became wheelchair-bound after suffering a stroke two years ago. He did hire a maid to help, but the maid did not last a year. Spouses like Yu Ping form the largest group of caregivers in Singapore. Out of a sample size of 3,000, 30% of patients identified their spouse as the main caregiver. Both Yu Ping and his wife's medical bills add up to five to six hundred Singapore dollars every month. The couple's only son is an odd job laborer who has his own family to provide for. After the break. Because I sing her. No more hope. Helping aging caregivers like Chu Ha and Yu Ping. What more can be done? It has been two weeks since 62-year-old Lim Yu Ping has come to work. He earns a monthly salary of about 1,100 US dollars a month as a driver. Yu Ping has not been well recently, and he foresees that in a month or so, he may no longer be able to work. He is also the sole caregiver of his 57-year-old wheelchair-bound wife, who suffered a stroke two years ago. I 
严重。那那你会好像常常呃担心将来会会怎样子吗？你可以跟我跟我们讲你的感受。会啦，当然会啦。好像说，如果少了他来讲哦，没有人给但有人说说，但没有再怎么办。Three in four caregivers in Singapore are employed, but this does not mean that they are financially able. Chu Ha works part time in a fast food restaurant and earns about 400 US dollars a month. Because she doesn't have a full time job. She doesn't benefit from the tax relief for living with a dependent aged parent. She is usually left with about 120 Singapore dollars for both her mother and her monthly expenses. There is barely anything set aside for a rainy day. In one focus group where all of them were single caregivers looking after their parents, this was the major worry and they said, shouldn't the government be helping us? Because we've used our Medisafe to help our parents, but we do not have children whose Medisafe we can depend on to help us. Medical care uh, has gone up. Consultation fees have gone up. But some medications prescribed by the doctors can be so expensive. They can come to four, five hundred dollars, would you believe it? They really could do without financial worries. Financial worries aside, social workers say the biggest problem with these aging caregivers is their education level. Eight in ten aging caregivers have had no formal education. Yu Ping never finished secondary school. His wife has only a primary six education. This affects their ability to spot side effects of drugs or read dosage instructions. It also means that caregivers like Yu Ping and his wife won't know how or where to look for either financial or medical help. We may have all the information on beautiful websites, interactive websites, but it requires literacy. So how do we reach those elderly caregivers who may be in their 60s and 70s who are not IT savvy. According to the 2010 National Health Survey, one in five caregivers in Singapore are the sole caregivers of their family members. For Yu Ping and Chu Ha, despite the burden they carry, all they hope for now is to continue caring for as long as they can. 我年轻的时候，我什么呃小的时候，我老妈照顾我，现在她老了，我照顾回她。所以，只要照顾她好，我我我自己不重要的。What happens when the elderly have no family members to depend on? What happens when they are elderly neighbors who have to rely on one another? Fong Chong Lun is one year shy of a hundred. For the last 43 years of her life, this 99-year-old has been living alone in this one-room rental flat at Northbridge Road. She is rather accustomed to living alone, and for her age, is surprisingly healthy. However, she is no longer able to go out of her flat without assistance.
Wait, hello? I don't lie. I don't lie. The call connects her to Chin Siu, another elderly resident in the same block. Both Fong and Chin Siu's friendship goes back 20 years, ever since they became neighbors. Over time, 85-year-old Chin Siu became Fong's default and part-time caregiver. Peace Connect is a voluntary welfare organization, or VWO, that provides help and care to elderly folk, including those without immediate family members. In recent years, they've realized the need to promote the act of informal caregiving between elderly residents. Having the old people, having to take care of someone who's around 90 years old, do you find this a little bit worrying? Actually, I am not very worried. The, the, the elderly in this estate are very street smart. Yeah, they are, I think they are more street smart than people who are like us. You know, we are more protected when we were young and so on. Lately, however, Chin Siu has been experiencing some weakness in his legs. He is also suffering from high blood pressure and high cholesterol. As a result, Fong isn't getting as much help as she used to. Jin Xu and Fong live in two of Singapore's 44,000 rental units. Four in ten units are occupied by at least one person 65 years and above and they often rely on each other for medical advice or care. While that is worrying, social workers say many of these residents don't want to go into nursing homes. About 20% of the residents here are on public assistance. This means they receive a monthly allowance of $400 or 327 US dollars a month. This often becomes a reason for not wanting to move into a nursing home. They feel that there's cash that they can throw and see in front of them, and they have control over. So when you tell them they're going to the nursing home, and then, sorry uncle, you're not going to get your $400, because that amount has to go to feed you in a nursing home, they're not, they're not happy. 96-year-old Lo Kam Tin, who also lives in a rental unit, has moved in and out of a nursing home a total of two times. Despite having no family, he refuses to live in a nursing home. 66-year-old Kong Kok Seng inadvertently became his caregiver because of one decision agreeing to become Tin's co-tenant in this one-room flat some 20 years ago. The Housing Development Board, or HDB, requires seniors to apply for a rental flat in pairs due to the limited supply of rental flats. The two applied to live together. Kok Sang is now Kam Tin's only family and primary caregiver. His patience is tested constantly, as Kam Tin also routinely forgets where he's hidden his money. Today, he found it 
in his boxes. So it is really a 24-7 monitoring because sometimes it's not just that they can't look after themselves. Sometimes it's got dementia coming in, senility coming in. As many of these aging caregivers are uneducated, being responsible for medication is the social worker's largest point of concern. In Lo Kam Tin's case, he needs to take at least five pills after every meal. Because the pills are segregated, and labelled with drawings, Kok Seng is able to make sure Kam Tin eats the right medicine at the right time. Generally, what they know is for themselves. So what they think is good for themselves should be applicable to the old person. So this is like common sense caregiving. If you send them for courses and all that, which is very valuable, these people may not be tuned to these formal courses and talks. Generally, the one thing that I noticed is that they have got lots of patients. Lots of patients. 18 years. Many have said that's when Singapore will face a silver tsunami. By that time, Singapore's elderly population will triple in size, meaning the number of aging caregivers is also set to increase. In the race against a rapidly aging society, the needs of these caregivers must be looked into as well. Only then, as a nation, can we age gracefully.